I grabbed a stack of original Xbox games off my shelf today, and I wanted to find the answer to one important question. I am the Game Collector, and this is Second Opinion Games, and today I find an original Xbox gem. Second Opinion Games Phantom Dust, one of the system's biggest Xbox Live games, at least before Halo 2 completely took everything over. In this game, it's not a first-person shooter, it's a third-person magic-wielding event where you run around picking up different types of dusts, you assign them to buttons on your controller, and you use your weapons to some various degrees. Most of them are pretty inaccurate, and you even have a shield move which you have to pick up in order to take out your opponents. Now, it's mostly one-to-one -one battles at the beginning of the game, but when things get frantic with lots of people on the battlefield is where this game truly shines. And graphically, I think it holds up quite well. It doesn't look as good as a 360 title, but it looks better than most of the original Xbox titles. This still manages to be a total gem. Crimson Sea, an action-adventure game in space. The game was made by Koei, which means it's a Dynasty Warriors clone. And sometimes you kill random generic enemies for up to 10 minutes at a time, continuously hacking and slashing everything down. At least here you have a laser gun also, but where the game is at its best is when you run through the environments and pick up extra people to add to your squad. It also has some pretty decent cutscenes with some ravishing women. Why does this girl need to be dressed like this? This is the captain of the ship and your boss, and this is her uniform or what passes as such. It also has a very generic storyline, but is one that's worth playing to the end. At some points in time, this game might kill you with mindless repetition, and other times you think you're playing an entirely different animal altogether, trying to figure out patterns of boss battles and running through the hilarious storyline. It's still barely a gem. Death Row, it's a super violent sports ball game that seems to take place in prisons or something like that. Now you pick up a disc and you throw it through a little hoop. Most of the time, you're going to be punching other people in the face as you do it, and there's even pickups on the ground, like extra cash and health power-ups that you can administer in between rounds of playing. But if you're picking up that sweet cash, well, you're not scoring with your sports ball, are you? So it's really a risk versus reward style of gameplay. Whether or not you sacrifice everything in order to score all the goals, but then you don't have the health to carry on, well, this can get kind of complicated. And there's only a handful of teams to really play as, but everyone sort of feels generic and lifeless. Even though they tried to give it plenty of tood, they never really succeeded in any way, shape, or form. You could never play this game online, even in the day, and yeah, I don't see why anyone would want to keep playing it today. It's definitely not a gem. Cursed Eye of Isis, horror games from this time have really climbed up in value, and this is not a cheap game to track down. And does it deserve the super high price? Well, the atmosphere here is done beautifully well. Also, your character seems to be a kleptomaniac, picking up everything he can from even dead bodies. This is darn right looting and morbid, and it's something you're gonna wanna have to do. It's not long before zombies start showing up Resident Evil style, and you might think the controls look like tank controls, but no, you could freely move in any direction with the controller. However, with the fixed camera angles, it makes controlling your character viciously awkward. And some points in time, I'm actually hitting left and my character seems to be hung up on absolutely nothing at all. Make sure you have a walkthrough beside you while you're playing this game because backtracking is going to be something that happens a lot. Also, it's not a particularly good game. The physics with punching and even shooting feel darn right terrible, and I really wanted to like this one, especially for its high price tag, but I cannot justify anyone buying it. 
Chicago Enforcer is probably one of the cheapest games you could pick up for this system. It's a first-person shooter in a sea of first-person shooters. It takes place in 1920s Chicago, and you might be working for some really famous gangsters of the time, which means you don't want to shoot civilians because they're your paying customers. Cops are really strong and will tear you apart, just like every common enemy in this game. There's running around, picking up things, and even money to buy bigger and badder weapons and if you could stick around long enough i'm sure there's some good times to be had blowing apart gangsters in this game however with the weapons you start off with you feel really underpowered and when you die you go to a loading screen which seems to take forever i spent more time staring at the loading screen while doing this gameplay than i did actually playing the game this does not make for a good time and not a hidden gem Prisoner of War, a World War II style prison break video game? Well, it certainly has me interested. You jump in, there's a day-night cycle, and you have to be at certain places at certain times to maybe count heads for roll call. If you pick up items, you could stash them in your foot box, which apparently the Nazis never decide to check. So it's completely safe when you shove your items in there. And when you skulk around, you're going to make sure to not get spotted. So it's sort Sort of like Metal Gear style prison break. And that sounds pretty darn good to me. The longer time I spend with it and learn the guards patterns, the more I want to keep playing the game. Graphically, it probably doesn't hold up that well. And the controls do get really wonky at spots. But the idea that I'm really in this prison really comes to life. And I cannot wait to escape. This is a true gem. Mech Assault, not really a hidden game here. This was one of the biggest games at the time, and still people know the name to this very day. But when I jumped in and started playing it all over again, controlling my giant mech, blowing up stuff with, by the way, this is some of the best explosion effects I have ever seen. I love how even the little guys take rockets to the face or you could just stomp them out. Matter of fact, I gotta say how ballsy it is to have infinite rockets in your walking biped is pretty darn cool. Machine guns even have ammo, which means what? Are machine guns more powerful than the rockets here? Well, maybe they are because everything seems to take a lot of hits. There's also day and night cycles here. Lots of different strategy to go through the map and plenty of voice chatter to keep you company as you do it. Now I managed to get my copy for free because my Xbox kept on breaking and I would send it back just to have it come back to me broken and then send it back again and then it repeated multiple times. After about receiving my fourth broken Xbox, well, they decide to send me a couple of free games for all of my trouble. Is this game still worth playing today? abso freaking loot. Ark Fatless. I think that's how you say the name of this title. It's a Morrowind inspired game and it is really dark. Matter of fact, I think the sun got blotted out in the storyline here and it takes place almost entirely underground. There's puzzles to solve. There's chains to pull and people to save and even punch out there's evil creatures all around and just has some of the most creepy atmosphere i think i ever played in a game crafting cooking doing magical skills this is darn right interesting at the very least is it for everybody well probably not if you never played an action rpg of this kind you are gonna have one miserable time also it has a really slow start but after you start getting into it and slowly powering up and learning the controls quite a bit better you are gonna find that this is one of the best experiences you can have on your mission Classified, The Sentinel Crisis, just another first-person shooter in a sea of first-person shooters. The controls feel very familiar to Halo players, and even your power suit feels exactly like Halo. But what this game does different from that is the fact that you're shooting a lot of people, but also your gun is modular, which means your gun is a sniper rifle, it is a full-on machine gun, and it is a rocket launcher, and many more. And 
and you could cycle through the different guns at any point in time and adjust your gameplay to fit the best strategy for what's in front of you. The game holds your hand a bit with different nav points, but the storyline is rather interesting. Why did so many people take a pass on this? Well, because it put a knight from a chess piece on the cover of the darn game, which people probably thought it was just a chess game instead of an awesome action shooter. Of course, this one is a hidden gem. Armed and Dangerous. This is a darn cool third person shooter. It seems to take place in the future, but the weapons don't seem too futuristic. Well, at least at first. If you manage to play more than halfway through the game, you will eventually get a gun that fires land sharks to kill your enemies, which is probably one of the coolest things ever. As you run through level to level, it feels really generic, but the levels are over really quick, and sometimes they get kind of difficult on top of it. And yeah, the controls just seem to work here. It also seems to have one of the best personalities of any shooter I ever played. If you're gonna go kooky, you should go full on kooky. If you're gonna go realistic, you have to go really realistic. This manages to be just the right balance with a whole lot of kooky when you get later on in the game, which keeps it spiced up and manages to be one of the most forgotten about third person shooters that I really wish for a sequel to this day. Magic the Gathering Battlegrounds is the final game we're gonna talk about today. I thought we'd start this Godly list off with magic and end it with magic. Now I bought the PlayStation 1 game the very first day it came out because I was a huge fan of the Alpha and Beta Magic the Gathering cards. And sadly, it was not what I expected. Then later, I took a pass on this game because I remembered how bad that PlayStation 1 game was. A couple years later, I managed to circle back to it, and I found myself having an interesting experience. It was like a 3D video game version of Magic the Gathering. You pick up mana, you smack down some of your opponent's creatures, and you send creatures over to your opponent. You can also cast different spells to make your creatures stronger, or maybe take out your opponent with a spell directly. And after you start playing this fast and frantic game, you're gonna find that it is darn right freaking awesome why did i take a pass on this one for so long then i tried to play it online against other real people and it seems like everyone forgot about this because even at the time i couldn't find anyone to play with now if you can sit down and play this with a friend you will find that once you get the learning curve figured out you have yourself one excellent magical experience and one of the biggest hidden gems of the platform. But of course, that's just my opinion. Thanks for watching. Thanks. You okay? Uh, who are you? You're the newbie. I'm Ketchak. There's more of us here. Let's go help them too. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I had a great time making it and I really do love the original Xbox. It was one of my favorite systems to collect for of all times and the games are still found really darn cheap. However, some of the horror games have climbed up there in the price and I recommend people start collecting for this system right now. By the time people figure out how great it actually is and how the controls are better than most of the PS2 games and the graphics and the load time, well, it might be too late and people would be snapping up all of these. So don't be afraid to leave me a comment in the comment box down below. And until later, I will see you again.